I'm back. This is Chandler with Melda Production, and today I'm doing another video on M Sound Factory. And if you look at it here, you probably notice that, wow, it looks a lot different. So actually, it's kind of had a makeover, so it has a bit of a new gooey look. The actual placement of things is, for the most part, the same, but it looks a bit different. It has a new style here, and it looks much more modern, which I like. I think it looks a lot better, actually. But today, one of the things I want to talk about is per voice effects. Now, when I first heard about this, I didn't really understand what these per voice effects were. And I was like, what? What is this? But basically what it is, is it means that each note you press is treated completely separately. So you can put effects just on one note and the other ones could be, you know, completely different. So I'll try to maybe demonstrate it for you. So in previous videos, I talked about this with the let's say sense to create pitch drift. And so each different note that you push could have a different scent value. But it's not just things with like oscillators or filters, etc. It can be other things too. So if I click here, for example, you'll see here we have per voice effects. We have lots of different effects over here that you can choose and try something new. So one thing I'll try just to kind of demonstrate to you is the wave folder so this is an effect that basically it caused like a distortion almost like a very harsh distortion so at low levels it really doesn't sound like anything so let me push a button here i have a, like a pluck sound going don't really hear anything but let's turn the drive up let me turn the pre-lp and the post-lp down so it's a little bit less harsh But you hear it's really distorting the signal. It sounds a little bit strange. So you're thinking, okay, that's cool. But you see, like, why does the generator have effects and why does why is there an effect section over here? So let me actually copy this, turn this off, and I'll show you over here. So you notice, hey, we still have a wave folder over here. And I can actually paste the settings in here and do the same thing. <laughs> It sounds almost the same. So let me just show you one thing you can do. So let's say if I'm over here in the FX section and I decide I want to play a C major chord using the wave folder. That's what my C major chords are sounding like. It just sounds like a complete mess. You can barely even hear that, you know, C major chord sound with this. So let's go back here and let's try it with this. So it's the exact same settings. And now let's try C major chord. So that's sounding much better, at least to me. And the same thing applies with other things. Like, let me see if I can try the distortion quickly. So here we go. So I have the distortion settings, and when I'm playing chords, oh, that, that clipped, sorry about that. It sounds relatively fine, you can hear all the notes in the chord, but if I go here and I open another distortion module in the effects section, and then I paste the same settings there, It sounds completely different, and that's because in the effects section, everything is processed together, so all three notes I'm playing are being processed at the same time, which is creating that distortion. Whereas in the generator, when I use the distortion module, everything is being processed separately. So like the C, E, and G are all being distorted separately, so it sounds much nicer. So that's one good thing about the per voice effects. You can use that with any type of distortion or rough effect, like um, even a bit crusher or something also kind of benefits for this benefits from this and the great thing is you can kind of choose the generator section the per voice effects use a little bit more cpu but sometimes you really want that cleaner sound from your distortion whereas the effects section if you want something more you know dirty so in that case for the distortion if i want to sound more like an electric guitar i might use the effects section but if i just want a little bit of like oomph on uh, my lead sound or something i might use it in the generator section so it's up to you which is great 
But let me go on and do some other things that might be interesting with this. So, of course, that's like, oh, okay, it's somewhat interesting, but what else can we do? Let's try another one. Let's turn the filter off for a second. And let's try an auto pan. So I have auto pan here. And with this, it'll just move things back and forth in stereo. Let's set the pan law to zero. Now that's kind of cool, but one of the good things I can do with this is one, I can change the voice phase so not every um, note is starting in the same phase. Some of it's maybe starting here at zero phase, maybe some starting at 90, some starting, you know, 180, wherever. So you notice some difference, but I think a bigger difference will come if I change the rate of all of them. So I can just click here, go into here, and if I click note random, each note will have a random variation. I can control how much I want with the depth here. So you can see it there, and if I want it to go not only up, but down and up, just click up and down here like this. So let's hear what this sounds like. Just one note first. Now with a chord. So these settings are probably a bit extreme. I could probably cut these down a bit to maybe here. But I think you can see like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And besides just randomly doing this, there's other ways we could do it too. Like for example, we could do it with a key scale. And so I could have it start, let's say very slow, move the rate down here and then increase it. So well, let's turn the up and down off. So it'll start with a low rate. And then as I move up with the uh, key, each key will have a Let's say, as I increase in notes, so as I go up the scale, it'll get faster and faster. Sorry about that. And I have it already set like this. You can set the key scale however you like, though. And there's... A Many other ways you can do this too. I could do this by uh, velocity. So note key, note velocity, etc. And there's other sources too, like controllers. And one of the great things is this works with MPE. So if you have an MPE controller, you can control each voice separately that way using uh, like expression or probably aftertouch, uh, etc. Timber. So it's up to you. And the same thing you could do with velocity if you want. So there's a lot of things you can do with this with the modulation. I'm using rate here, but you can use this with a lot of other parameters. So if you look in here, you see there's many other types of effects here we can use, like vibrato or flanger, etc. So there's lots of creative things you could do. Like, for example, you could have chorus and on your MP3 controller, you control the wet and dry amount of the chorus by moving your hand up and down, for example. But let's try one or two other ones. Let's turn the filter back on so we have the pluck sound again. Let's try a delay. So delay, let me pop this out so you can see it a little bit better. So we have the delay here. So you hear the delay and it's a little bit interesting, but Let's see, if I hit the button quickly and I don't hold it, let's see what happens. Strange, it kind of cuts off. Let's increase the delay time so we can hear this a little bit better. Let's increase it to maybe like 418. So I'll just hit the button or hit the key quickly. There's no delay, but let's try to hold it down this time. I'll turn up the feedback so you can hear that a little bit better. So here's me holding the key. Here's me not holding the key. So what you'll notice is for this, if you hold down the key, the delay will play. But if you don't, it will cut off the feedback. And at first I thought this was like a bug or something. But actually, 
what this depends on is the global envelope. So everything in generator is controlled by the global envelope. So here I have the release at 500. So as soon as I let my finger off the key, 500 milliseconds later, there's no sound. So anything in the generator will be cut off, delay, reverb, etc. So keep that in mind. And when I first saw this, I thought, eh, I don't like this. I thought this is kind of troublesome. I don't like it. So if you want to have that delay be heard, increase the release a lot, so like this. So in that case, it doesn't matter if I let my hand off the key or not. But having it down low like this actually creates lots of opportunities. There's lots of things you can do. If you don't like this setting, of course, just use the effects section and you don't have to worry about the global envelope at all. But in this case, there's lots of things we can do with this. Like, for example, many times when uh, you're playing with something, like the delays kind of get in the way and you think, how can I duck these out until like the right moment? But with this, if you play shorter notes quickly and release them, of course, there's no delay. So I could do something like this. Like that. But if I took those exact same settings, and let's say I use another delay over here in the FX section. Uh, where are my delays? Here we go. Just paste this in here. So they're the exact same settings. Here it creates this huge mess. So by using these per voice effects, you can actually control when the delay is playing or when it's not playing. And it's not just the delay, any time-based effect will do the exact same thing. So you could use this with uh, the granular module or the reverb module. So if you wanted to have the reverb cut off quickly at the end of a certain note or something, you can do that really easily, which I like. Usually it takes lots of like automation to do that and it's troublesome, but this is actually really easy. But let me show you one more thing you could do with this, uh, with here the panorama I could set this up with the key scale again and that way when I'm playing the lower notes are going to the left side and as I move up it gradually moves to the right like this which is kind of cool, or I could just have this set randomly, like here, note random, like this. And I could do this with other parameters too, like the delay time, I could move that down and set that however I felt like, uh, note random, etc. Like this. <laughs> so if you kind of want a random effect like that, you can kind of get it. So for most things, I don't know if I'd use that random setting for the delay, but there are some cases I might want to use it and you could come up with something interesting. But I think the per, per voice effects can create all sorts of new and interesting textures. And remember, it's not just the effects I show. There's a lot of other ones here, too. And some of them are more practical, like, for example, the compressor. The compressor works per voice. So, for example, if you play a chord, the bass note might be much louder than the treble notes. So using the compressor, it would compress the bass notes, but it would leave the treble notes alone, which is useful. And there's lots of other effects you can do with that. But... If you like this, please give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe down below if you haven't done that, and check out all the other plugins at MeldaProduction.com. And until next time, see you.